Hey, good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, March 25th, and Wednesday we don't see any Pioneer or Modern League dumps. So this is the day I like looking back at the last week of preliminary results to kind of get a feel for what the actual winning metagame is. Um, the leagues are great for seeing what is possible in the format, uh, what you know, what you can manage to win five consecutive games with. But I like looking at the preliminaries for the real metagame for a few reasons. They're consistent. There's six of them every week in each format, um, regularly scheduled events. They're five rounds. They're solid. They're, they're pretty high participation. I think they cap at 256 or something like that. I don't know what the actual numbers that appear, but they're relatively high participation. There's some stakes involved, and you see some good players play in them. So... They're probably the equivalent of a 1K or something like that, and they're very consistent. So it's really good to see over time uh, how the metagame develops. And this week now, that this is the second one of these I've done, uh, I'm going to compare uh, results from one week to the next and look at how the metagame is changing. And I, I think this is going to be kind of our step back day and, and see where the, the formats really are. So what we've seen over the last week is in Pioneer um, didn't really see any change in the number of decks reported same number of different decks appeared but there's some churn um, at down at the bottom of the metagame in decks that didn't appear this week that did the week before or new decks that came in modern definitely saw an uptick in participation uh, I don't know if there was a I, I think it was the same number of results posted so uh, just more people playing and, you know, you can see it's very, you know, modern is much more diverse than Pioneer just because of the larger card pool. And uh, 18 decks, I'm, I'm quoting new here in the, uh, in the slide because some of the new decks are just decks that didn't appear last week, but they're old favorites. So uh, we'll see some of those. So let's look at Pioneer first. Um, last year, or last week, uh, we noticed that Demir Inverter was pretty much the tier zero. Well, Mono White Devotion has caught it. Uh, they posted an equal number of results. You could argue either way which is better, Mono White Devotion or Demir Inverter. Looking at these results, Devotion won or went 5-0 in more events, but Demir Inverter posted uh, 4x or better results more frequently. But they're close. They're definitely, as you can see, the two top decks in the format. Um, and their position 1-2 have not changed. So this is kind of, if you can put two decks in Tier 0, this is Tier 0 of Pioneer. Uh, right below it, we've got a trio of decks, Mono Red Aggro, Bant Spirits, and Sultai Delirium. They kind of are all um, fighting for that next level spot, um, and they're very different decks, right? Bant Spirits is a tempo deck. Sultai Delirium is a mid-range deck. Mono Red Aggro is Mono Red Aggro. Um, so they're you know, very different decks trying to attack this format and with some success. Uh, right after that is kind of the top of the next tier. Uh, we've got the Mono Green Walkers deck um, holding steady in its sixth spot. Uh, didn't 5-0 any events this week, um, but... Uh, it's still it's a, it's a solid choice um not really a ramp strategy more of a mid-range style deck uh niv to light and lotus breach both made some gains this week um moving up into that next tier uh niv was the deck of the format right before the pro tours or players tours and that metagame kind of dismantled it but it's rediscovering itself i think and then Lotus Breach is, you know, the combo deck that scared everyone at first, but has uh, settled into its place. So we can, in the top couple of tiers here, we've got combo control, we've got aggro, we've got tempo, we've got mid range, and we've got pure control. Uh, so that's a good mix there. Uh, right after that, uh, Golgari Stompy was the only other deck to 5-0 in any of the events, and it's hovering. You know, these are the the fringe tier. Uh, Blue-White Spirits, the white Devotion deck that's splashing blue, still hangs around. In Soul and Mono Black Aggro kind of bringing up the rear of this list. 
Um, no real shifts around in their positioning. They're kind of all jockeying around in that lower tier. Uh, the rest of the decks we saw this week, uh, blue-white control, It people keep saying it's a good deck, but it does not put up the results in the preliminaries. I'm not sure of the exact reason for that, but uh, we'll have to watch and see what this does. Uh, Orzhov Aura is hanging around here. Simic Ramp. This is the mostly green, uh, splashing blue ramp deck. And then Gruel Aggro, the um, Galia deck right here. After this, all the decks that appeared this week were new to the week. Uh, there were no decks that debuted any higher than this. Uh, Boros Burn. This is the, the pioneer version of the traditional burn deck in modern. Um, Boros Charms and the whole bit. Um, showed, this is the first time I've seen it actually, a true burn deck show up in uh, Pioneer. And then we had a bunch of one-offs. Uh, is it Phoenix showed up again? Uh, the Simic Unexpected Results deck showed up. Feather was back. Um, there was a Grixis Midrange deck, Demir Control, Bank Control, a Simic Aggro deck. It was uh, a, a mix of things here. And then decks that were at the bottom of last week's metagame that dropped off. The Elder Deep Fiend deck, the John Nexus deck, Vampires, Humans, uh, Heroic, the uh, Golgari Aggro deck, which was basically a mono green aggro splashing black. The mono blue deck, spa Splashing White, that one disappeared, and uh, the Esper Midrange deck from last week. So, as we saw, kind of the same stuff at the top of the metagame, shuffling around a little bit. Mono White is kind of adapting, and it's making its play. Um, I would watch this dynamic over the next week, how much you're going to face Mono White and Demir in the, uh, the Pioneer Leagues. So Modern. Um, modern has kind of coalesced into three distinct tiers, I think. Maybe even four, uh, at least according to the preliminary results. Uh, kind of interesting here to see Tron, traditional Tron doing as well as it does in the preliminaries. Because it doesn't seem to be doing well in the one-off events. Um, the challenges and the PTQs and things like that. It's placing, but it's not doing this well. Uh, I think this is more showing the consistency and the number of Tron players out there, where it's it's good at posting the 3-2 and the 4-1s, kind of like Jund. Um, but it's uh, I think it's just getting here by sheer numbers, and it'll be interesting to see how this uh, carries forth whether this was a one-time thing and the meta adjusts or what. Uh, Eldrazi Tron right behind. Didn't 5-0 a single event, but definitely was always around, as well as the Eurosa deck. Uh, those kind of separated themselves as the top three decks in the format. Eurosa making the biggest move up into that tier. Um, this is a relatively new deck, so I think you'll still see some innovation here. It would not surprise me if that's the number one deck next week. Um, in our next tier, I kind of want to talk about an effect that we're showing that, that happened recently with the Bant Snowblade deck. You notice it dropped four spots from last week. It was the number one deck last week. What happened this week is there was a split. Uh, a number of players, and here it's even listed as a number seven deck, took out the Stoneforge Mystic Package and basically turn it into a control deck. So now you've got two very different Bant Snow decks. You've got Snowblade and the Bant Snow Control that all came that came from the same roots. And if you put the two together, that's 24 results. That's put putting it at the number two deck. So yeah, you're you can say Bant Snow is part of that top tier, but the way these decks play out is pretty different, and, and the um, the role that they're taking in the game is pretty different. Bant Snowblade is much more of a mid-range deck versus Bant Snow Control being the control deck. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how this split plays out over the next few weeks and w which of these decks uh, ends up being uh, the better choice in the metagame. Right here in this next tier, we've also got Amulet Titan, as people would expect. Uh, even without the loss, even with the loss of uh, Once Upon a Time, this is still a very strong deck. 
Primetime is probably the best or second best creature in the format. You could make an argument that Uro, Primetime, and Urza are the three best creatures in the format right now. Um, and then Mono Red Blitz and Humans kind of uh, bringing up the rear in this first tier of successful decks. Um, after this, we've got Mono Red Blitz, which dropped off a bit this week. I think, uh, I mean, we. I think I'm. Oh, sorry. What I forgot to do here, I forgot to remove these rows off the table. My apologies. Um, same data here, Mono Red Blitz and Humans. So right after these, from 7 down to 4, uh, we've got Burn, we've got Gruel Monsters. This is kind of, uh, and I alluded to this yesterday in the League, in the Modern League results. Um, this is kind of a spectrum of not quite Ponza decks with varying levels of land hate in it, but there you'll typically have at least three pillages and you might have more land hate in that. But there's some level of gruel agronist and destroy your lands here. Uh, then we've got dredge, which fell off quite a bit this week uh, for one reason or another. People, I mean, dredge is a cyclical deck, right? It's going to do as well as the lack of graveyard hate in people's sideboards. Uh, five color Niv, the Bring to Light Niv deck, was the uh, lone new appearance this week in the top decks. Um, this is mostly uh, I forget his name, Lanny Ninai, Lanny New York, New York, I think is his uh, handle. Uh, has been playing the deck a fair bit and doing pretty well with it. I believe both of these five O's were his, um, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, this was my deck of deck of choice in Modern um, last fall, and it's it's fun. It's a fun deck. Uh, we got Grixis Wurza and Ad Nauseam uh, and Jun Death Shadow bringing up the rear of this tier here, uh, showing up a little bit. Uh, it's interesting to note that no Death Shadow deck 5-0'd. Uh, Jun Death Shadow had the most results, and none of them were better than a 3-2. So, not sure Death Shadow is the place to be right now. Um, Grixis Death Shadow, we'll see, didn't even appear in the results this week. So, that is a bit of a development. Um, rest of the decks here, if there's an asterisk, it means if I vote a list. If there is a um, carrot next to it, it was new for the week. So Titan Shift, Titan Field, Artifact Breach, and Infect all posted three results. Um, in the two ofs, we had uh, some of the snow control stuff. Bring to Light Scape Shift was around. Storm is down here. Um, but Naya Zoo, Neo Brand, and Living End uh, all came back this week. And this is why I quote new, right? I mean, these are decks that have been around for a bit. They just weren't around last week. They are this week. Had a bunch of one of repeats. Esper Control, its only result was a 5 0. Uh, I believe that was Zach Allen. It would not surprise me. Um, but yeah. Uh, Four Color Shadow was down here. Bogles, uh, the Obzon Heliod deck was down here. Soul Herder, a bunch of stuff. And then new decks that showed up this week that were not around last week. You'll see a bunch of them in here. Some old favorites. Uh, the Electro Balance deck, Jeskai Ascendancy, Hollow One. Is it Phoenix making a return? Um, five Color Elementals, Blue Moon. One deck that was kind of interesting was a Five Color Planeswalkers deck. There were like 21 Planeswalkers in it. Um, I think if you go search on Goldfish for Dovin Hand of Control in Modern, you will find the deck listed. It was quite a brew. Um, interesting to see if this returns. Uh, so that was kind of where Modern went this week. Um, oh, what? sorry, what did we lose? Uh, what didn't show up? Decks that established decks that didn't show up last week? Blue Eye Control. Bant has pretty much replaced it in the metagame. Grixis Death Shadow was gone. Elves was gone. Kiki Court had made a, a reappearance last week. It's gone this week. Crabvine didn't show up. Uh, 
a couple of stone blade decks that weren't snow based disappeared. Uh, and then some of the kind of unusual brews that showed up last week that didn't didn't return. You know, there's a list of them here. The eight ball deck, unearth, there's a teamer breach deck. Uh, all just kind of disappeared this week. Uh, we'll see if they make a return or if they were one-offs. Um, but that's pretty much our uh, metagame over the last week. A little bit of churn. Um, a little bit of uh, jockeying at the top, so to speak. But not as um, as big of a changeover from week to week, particularly in Pioneer. Pioneer is feeling pretty set here at the top. I think we're getting a real established metagame. Um, and it's a relatively healthy one. We've got a good mix of archetypes, uh, a lot of different things doing well in these events. So it's good to see. Good to see. Um, I think that's about it for the week. Uh, tomorrow I'll be back with another league walkthrough. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoy this uh, look at the last week's metagame. Uh, if you like what I'm doing here, do please hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you want to get notified every time I get my new walkthroughs up, hit that uh, notification bell. And uh, I do appreciate your sticking with me. And enjoy. Stay safe out there. Wash your hands. The whole bit. Bye-bye.